Okay, we are back with you here on a Monday morning. I'm Marlon Bowling with you, your tour guide to the ag commodities. Well, we had an interesting open on the grain trade. Things uh, came off of their uh, trade that we had in the overnight session. They drifted lower. Let's see if they can rebound or not. Let's go to the corn board. Here are the quotes provided by Bar Chart. And as we go to the big board, we have the December corn. Nope, it's faltering. Uh, still continuing to slide. We're down four and a half now at 491 per bushel. Had that high of 497 overnight, and we just continued to erode away from that. March is now four and a half lower at 504 and a half. Can soybeans hang on? No, they can't. November is down 10 and a half, 12, 91 and three quarters right now. And January down 10 and a quarter at 1310. Although I will give it credit, it has climbed off of its earlier lows uh, last half hour by about four cents or so right now. Well, can the wheat market hang in there? It was very strong overnight. It closed up the overnight session on the highs. No, it gave back a lot of ground. And we have December wheat in Chicago, a penny lower now at 585. That would be six and a half cents off of its overnight high. In the Kansas City market, you have December currently a half cent higher. That's it. 670 and a half is now the last trade. That's seven cents off of its overnight high, just about. And uh, now we're within about two cents of our low of the morning trade. So let's go to Minneapolis wheat. What's it doing? Well, it's hanging in there. December seven and three quarters higher at 738 and a half. And that's still within about three cents of its uh, overnight high at this point. In the cotton market, we have December new crop 61 points higher at 83.01 per pound. It did have a low last night of 81.68 and then it bounced off of that. Uh, pretty significantly. We're about 130 some points off of that now. For those of you watching what's going on in the crude oil trade, well, apparently things are just kind of status quo in the Middle East. Uh, they are taking a little premium out of crude oil December down 95 cents at 87.13. The U.S. dollar index hadn't been doing much. It's still pretty flat, hovering around unchanged. It goes above and below by a few points but it just doesn't go anywhere. Right now we're down 63 points on the December futures and the Dow Jones Industrial Average down 26 points at 33,232. Let's go to our in-house guest. We have the one and only Chris Swift with us. And he, of course, is with Swift Trading right here in Nashville. Hey, good morning. Good, good morning. Monday morning. Yes, it's fine Monday morning. Uh, I haven't got to talk with you for a couple of weeks. It's been a little bit. How so, you been? You're oh, all grown up. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think you're in my seat. So. <laughs> yeah. We're we'll to straighten this out here. Um, so anyway, talk to me about this grain market activity. Sure. It's really, in my mind, struggling after what looked like a strong move, especially in the wheat overnight. A, a little bit. On. And you know, last week in the corn, we saw it kind of inch up just a little bit. We made our highs last week and in the corn and I think it's time for marketing. Uh, you know, we've got most of it now harvested. It's pretty much time for a marketing aspect and we know we have to pin the tail on the donkey at some point in time and probably need some sales to pay some bills, get ready for Christmas time. So I think that's going to be the focus going forward is marketing and then anything that kind of moves the market would probably come from South America more so than here. Okay, let me bring up a uh, chart. It'd be a December corn chart here. And when you look at this, I mean, yeah, we had a little upward move there, but it's just a tiny little spike in the grander scheme of things here. I mean, here we are sitting around 490. Is five dollars un unbreakable right now? Do you think? Or well, not? it's um, we're just marking time. If, if you think about it, we've got pretty much all the crop already harvested, and it's going into storage. And everybody's looking out into the future, going, "Well, we've got a premium here and a premium there, and I know I'm going to need to market some sometime in the March, April, May time frame. And so I'm just going to store it till then. And then they take advantage of the premiums that are available, the carry charge that's in the market, and then any kind of basis change that may uh, develop from there. And a lot of it still hinges on the Mississippi River. That inability to move grain just has everything locked up and actually when it does break loose you might think well then prices go higher but actually they may go a little bit lower because now everything's starting to move at once. I may show my age here, but uh, do they still do 30-day free storage at local elevators or not? Um, I'm not real sure. I, I don't know whether they still do that or not. You know, the, the increase in on-farm storage might have had impacted that. And with corn and wheat already in kind of a full carry, I, I don't know if they're going to be so gracious as to carry that for you. Yeah. And interest rates, look at where interest rates are. That's the big deal. Yeah, so right. That's what carry right, is. Right. is the I don't know if they're going to so. go down any. Yeah, year, not anytime so. soon. <laughs> Okay, uh, thanks for bringing that up. All right, we'll come back in a moment, and I can't wait to hear this guy's thoughts on what's going on in the livestock trade 
after we had that cattle on feed report that came out Friday. Ooh, that thing went in a tailspin. Talk about that next. All right, let's get you updated on this livestock trade. Started out kind of weak. Can they rebound or not? No, no, no. December live cattle down 280 at 181.82. February live cattle now dropping $3.12. Yikes, at 184.60 this morning. As we move over to feeder cattle, we have the November down $1.82 at 240.40. Well, I will say it has bounced a dollar off of its earlier low. January feeders down 267, now down 287. And we're at 240.17. That's a dollar off of its earlier low, believe it or not. Um, lean hogs, you have December, 42 cents higher at 66.42, and the other months anywhere from 17 to 40 cents higher. So a little firmer tone on the lean hogs, not a runaway by any stretch. Okay, uh, let's go back to Chris Swift. This uh, feeder cattle trade, after the cattle on feed report that came out last Friday, we thought it was a bearish report. Mm -hmm. Question was, you know, how much of that was baked into the cake, as right, they say. Right. And now this morning, they just knocked the knees out from under the uh, feeder cattle market. Although, in the last half hour, we tacked back on a dollar again. A little bit. Do you bit. think that's it? Um, it might not be it, but it's um, it's going to be very hard to reverse this particular trend going in right now. The cattle feeder has seen month after month of, of increased profit potential all the way up until June of this year. June of this year it started backing off a little bit as the feeder cattle prices rose sharply. Now that fat cattle prices have stopped going up, yet we're still five, uh, at least five more months of higher feeder cattle prices still to come into the market from previously purchased feeder steers. So without the cost of the, uh, the price of the fed steer going higher, it seems like those input costs continually increased going forward. So therefore that will start to lower their profit potential going forward. So I think they, they got real busy and saw that and started paying lower for feeder cattle uh, futures coming in. It's the only thing they have any influence over. They can hedge grain, they can hedge fuel, they can hedge all these factors. But when it comes into the influence of a market, only the feeder cattle is the one that they can influence because they're the only ones that care anything about it. So you think it's just now starting to catch up? I, with, I, uh, I think so. I, I, I think we're going to probably drop several more dollars is my opinion of what we're going to do in the feeder cattle market to bring profitability back to the cattle feeder. Corn hadn't gone down to any extent. Fuel prices continue to go higher. Labor prices are still higher. There's no input cost that has gone down. Now we've leveled off in the price of fat cattle market, so we need that it price increase in the fed steer market, or we're going to have to start getting lower feeder cattle prices, one of the two. Or we just lose money. We can do that. And, and there's nothing, we've seen cattle feeders do that before. It's just consistently lose money. And we hope that maybe they avoid that cycle this time somehow or another by seeing out into the future there's things to do. Aren't you the Grinch that stole the cattle market? <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> wow. I, I've been we, on vacation. I've had a long we, time to think about it. We've got a couple months to Christmas yet, and the Grinch is already here. All right. Well, anyway, thanks for the uh, information. A anytime, Barley. I think, yeah. Uh, anyway, I appreciate that. Uh, uh, welcome back <laughs> yeah. next week. Hopefully you're in a better mood. Anyway, Chris Swift with us. I was Swift trading here in Nashville. <laughs> Suzanne, I'll turn it back to you.